Reese, MG, nice job. Got all the pencils sharpened, ready to go. This will be a great episode. You guys really know how to make a point. No, I didn't think it was funny either. And this episode is not going to be funny either. This is serious business. Welcome, minders, from across the globe. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. We're just going to do a episode on sharpening. Now, I've only done one episode on sharpening. It was a review of a, at the time, new pencil sharpener that I had. We're going to recap that. But we're just going to sort of look over the state of how I like to sharpen, what I've found that's new, and just talk about pencils and pencil sharpening in general. No more fall to raw. No more messing around. Let's go do it. Right now. Right now. You know, if I were asked if you could have one art supply and nothing else that you would take into the future for the rest of your days, what would it be? And it's this right here the lowly pencil. I could live happily ever after just drawing with this. But as you know, us artists, we've got a whole range of all different kind of pencils. I've got more pencils than I would like to admit. And they need to stay sharp. The first thing I wanted to show you is the category that by and large, I have rejected. I mean, I really have no fondness for these kind of pencil sharpeners, okay? Not happy. We're just going to do real talk right now. They, you know, they produce stubby points. With the exception of this one, this will produce a long point. They're really all the same. They're all this right here. I mean, seriously. See? In fact, I could take this out and slide this one in, which has a slightly fatter. So they're all this or this or some variation. Uh, see, there again. Or like this. I had high hopes this would be a nice little pencil sharpener. Nope. Basically, this is a plastic version of this. And I really uh, had hoped, since they had one up here for their color pencils, they would be bigger for the fatter Albert Durer's or Polychromos. Uh-uh. They don't fit. It doesn't matter, though. We have other choices, and that's what we're going to talk about. And just as a finish up to this, the only reason to ever even consider something like this is if you carry something like this out where you don't have power and you can't use a power pencil sharpener or it's not convenient to use a hand crank. In other words, portability is the only reason you might need something like that. I take care of that by using these. They come in every shape and size mechanical pencils and I absolutely love mechanical pencils. You can go from the teeny tiny little needle point, and this is like a 0.3 right here, to a 0.5, to a 0.7, 0.9. This is a one and a half millimeter, two millimeter. You know, this one is a colored pencil, all the way up to like the 5.6 millimeter clutch pencils. This one has the sharpener built right into the end, since it's an unusual size. Sharpening is easy on all of these. Two millimeters can easily be sharpened with uh, one like this. And this one I do like. This is a nice little pencil sharpener. The smaller ones don't really need to be sharpened since they always stay the same diameter. The other thing that this c category of pencil takes care of for me are the long points. You know, the ones where the artists recommend that you shave it away with a uh, knife and reveal a whole bunch of lead. And really the only reason uh, those teachers and ateliers do that is because they teach a style of drawing that holds the pencil sideways and um, uses the side a lot. Okay, I don't particularly draw that way, but even if I did, this type pencil handles that really, really well. And these clutch pencils, I can even put like willow charcoal if I want. I can put any hardness really of lead in here. There are a few of the softer ones that are better in a wood pencil, but for graphite and even some color pencils, uh, that handles me pretty well. But that said, we know there are other pencils that we use. Any manner of colored pencil, charcoal pencil, pastel pencil. <laughs> so what's an artist to do? What's an artist? To do years ago, we're probably going back 25 years. Um, 
I was doing a lot of color pencil work, uh, color pencil over acrylic airbrush, color pencil over gouache airbrush, over watercolor. I used color pencil a lot. And I was not real happy with uh, the sharpening that I was using. Not happy. And I just simply asked around. The, I had an electrical pencil sharpener that was horrible. It just chewed these things up. I used a hand crank, which wasn't a whole lot better. And I asked around. And this became my first, my very first, pencil sharpener. As a professional illustrator, I used the heck out of this. It was recommended by a fellow illustrator. And I asked him, I said, what do you use? He says, oh, Panasonic, they're great. So that's what I bought. Um, this has since been dropped a couple times. It doesn't always work. And waste basket thing there is broken. But this set me on a journey to see what was available currently. And that led me to the very first pencil sharpener I reviewed on this YouTube channel. And that is the School Smart. And I really, really, really love this pencil sharpener. What I love about it is it's fast. Uh, it doesn't chew up pencils. Uh, even delicate ones like uh, watercolor pencils or soft colored pencils. It's super heavy duty. And that was, I think, one of the most impressive things when I got it was it's just really heavy duty. So it's got a big, chunky, beefy motor in there. Now, super fast. I like to zzz and go. Back to working and drawing. Zzz, go. Zzz, go. It has auto disengage. Some people call that an auto stop. It actually never stops, but as soon as the point is sharp, you can feel the blades disengage. Love this pencil sharpener. Now, here's the problem. You quickly find out if you, if you buy many artist grade supplies that pencils get thicker. And alas, this only had a standard size aperture. So I was purchasing a lot of pencils that would not fit in here. Bummer, bummer, bummer. These are pretty much all standard size. This includes your standard graphite, like the Stettler HB here. All the Prismacolor colored pencils were pretty much standard size. Standard size is roughly uh, seven and a half millimeters. This one's measuring 7.6, okay? That's about what they all are. They'll vary a little bit, just a tad. 7.42 on this color race. And as a general rule, a standard pencil aperture is about eight, just slightly over eight millimeters. This one's almost exactly eight millimeters. So when we talk about standard, that's what we're talking about. I highly, highly recommend this pencil sharpener. If all you ever do is use standard size pencils. Prismacolors, which are a fairly soft pencil. Just never an issue in here. I, I've never had one break from the pencil sharpener. Occasionally you'll get some that have lead breakage in the pencil, but I have never had the sharpener break my lead as I was sharpening. It holds the pencil very firm, and so there's no wiggle. There are some standard apertures that are just a tiny bit wider, like maybe 8.2, 8.3, a little bit of wiggle. This one holds it nice and tight. But as a result, you can't get anything bigger in there. Really fast. And I really think uh, in a studio pencil sharpener like this, uh, the auto disengage is a necessity. Yeah, so there are a variety of other pencils that are slightly bigger. Some are really close. You can almost get them in there. This one, this is a uh, Pitt, Faber-Castell Pitt pastel pencil. And it just fits, but it's really tight and I really have to shove it in there. Others are even bigger. Here's a Conti pastel pencil. Won't fit at all. This is a Caran d'Ache Graphwood graphite pencil. Won't fit. Uh, the Polychromos uh, will almost fit. I can kind of shove it in there, but it would, it's a tight fit and I don't like to, sh I would really have to stick it in there hard. Alas, my favorite watercolor pencil, the Albrecht Durer's, no go. Not happy. And that really set me on the path to finding something else. And a lot of that is just because uh, of the bigger cores they use on softer pencils. This is a Museum Aquarelle. Won't fit. Here is an unsharpened 
charcoal pencil. This is a Faber-Cat style pit. And take a look at the size of that core. And that's just because they're soft. And you have the what I would call the jumbo size. This is the Albrecht Durer or Magnus pencils, which are just like the Albrecht Durer's, but they're a jumbo size. Probably the biggest wood pencils that I have anyway. Here is the Faber-Castell 9000 series graphite jumbo. So again, this put me on the hunt for something else, and I really, really just did not want to go to a hand sharpener. Yes, there are crank ones that are pretty good. I think DeWent, from what I hear, makes a good one. I just decided not to go that route since these were going to be studio pencil sharpeners um, and I was out for speed and convenience. I decided just to not worry about the hand crank type. Yeah, I don't have fun classroom memories of these either. I hated walking across the classroom to use it and turning that silly crank felt a little like dancing in front of my classmates. So where did I go from here? This is where I went from here. This is the Exacto School Pro. Love this pencil sharpener. This is very heavy duty, just like this. Uh, you can already see it's got a multiple aperture opening that you can dial up the size of your pencil. And we'll go from the really tiny thin ones to this one here that has the extra little ring around it. That's your standard size. And this standard size is just slightly bigger than this standard size. Okay, it will actually even take the polychromos. Which will almost fit in here, but I have to jam it real hard. You can see, instead of a right at an 8, it's about an 8.3 millimeter. Yep, running about an 8.3 millimeter on mine. What you running? I think this pit pastel pencil will fit into that standard. Yes. There you go. It's fast. I don't think it's quite as fast as this. So the motor may not be quite as powerful, but I've never had an issue with this. It's got a triangular aperture right here. It's kind of interesting. I don't really have any triangular pencils. Uh, this aperture here is perfect for the Albrecht Durer's, the standard Albrecht Durer's. And it's got the jumbo size port, which will fit the Albrecht Durer Magnus. Yay. So I really love this. I, I did not want to retire this. <laughs> Undoubtedly, if I'd have known about this and the bigger pencils I would end up having when I first uh, looked for a pencil sharpener, I would have bought this one. So what I do is I continue to use this for standards and I just dial this over to the size for the Albrecht Durer. Since I'm most likely to be sharpening in a bigger pencil, something about the size of an Albrecht Durer, a Polychromos. Um, here's a Derwent drawing. It's a little bit big for that. It's better on the standard. So I could dial it back. But it's okay in that, that size. Museum Aquarelle fits perfectly in this aperture. And we just went from a stubby factory point to my favorite kind of point, the long point. Love it. So the only differences that I'll point out is one I've already pointed out. I think th this is very heavy duty also. It has a great motor in it. I don't think it's quite as fast as this, but there's very little negligible difference. I do love pencil sharpeners that go straight down because they're not likely to move. Now this has suction cups and you can hear whenever I pick it up the little suction braking. So uh, it does resist pushing, but you can still push it if you push hard enough. It's, I've not really found that to be a major issue, but it's something that I should point out. Uh, another big factor which uh, falls in favor of this is the, what I call the waste basket or the shavings basket. It's quite small, even though it looks big on the outside, it's really only here because this kind of conforms in. So you only have that little bit of space in there. What they consider full is the top of this. It doesn't hold a lot of shavings. You know, if you have a wastebasket nearby, that's like, oh well, not a big deal. It also has a little extra port 
here that you have to make sure uh, when it fills up stays clean. This, however, has a huge basket. I mean, I can sharpen on this one for days and not empty it. Just love the size of that. So that's kind of where I am. Highly recommend this if all you ever do is standard size pencils. If you have a variety of sizes and thicknesses, uh, you really probably want this one. There's no reason to buy two. Again, uh, I bought these two separated by probably three years. Now, let me show you something new. And I just became curious because I started seeing these pop up. I bought one not because I needed it. I do it for you. In fact, I may end up giving it away. I don't know yet, but uh, I, I will use it for a while to test it. But let me show you something. Let me get rid of my crumbs here first. Now, if you've not bought a pencil sharpener, you're looking to save some money, uh, you're interested in maybe something that's a little bit innovative, uh, you might be interested in this. Now, I haven't done a lot of testing on it yet. So far, everything is positive. This is the AFMAT pencil sharpener. Zoom in on this a little bit. This is a really cool design. And let me show you one of the most interesting things about it. It caught my eye. It has the large aperture. I'm just sticking the butt of the pencil in there so you can see. However, what's unique about it is you don't need a dial like on the Exacto School Pro because it's got these cams which adjust to the size of the pencil automatically. They're kind of spring-loaded cams and they hold it firm. That's really nice. So anything from a standard size up to these big like jumbo size will fit in here. Love that. Another feature uh, that's kind of unique on here is you can dial up a sharp point or a slightly duller point. Now I'll be honest with you. Uh, this didn't turn out to be all that impressive a deal. Uh, the dull point was just only slightly duller. It didn't change uh, the angle of you know the point at all. But it's there uh, if you want to. And I really probably it's not a feature I would use that much since the points end up going dull fairly quickly anyway. And this is the other thing that really impressed me. The whole thing disassembles. First of all, if you're going to just empty your shavings, you take the top off. You have that whole area. This actually would hold more shavings than the School Smart. If you want to clean it, this part comes off. You can take it out and clean it. And this comes out. And so you can get directly to the blades and clean them. And I'm not going to take them off, but these even come off. They, they're seated in a little spring here. This is really not something you'd have to do very often unless you ended up with a jam. The other thing I will say for this is it doesn't feel as heavy duty as the School Smart or the Exacto School Pro. It's a lighter weight kind of a plastic thing. So I have my questions about durability over time. Those may be unfounded, I don't know. But it's just something I feel like I ought to mention. It is not battery operated. It uses a little AC adapter. So let's uh, do some testing. I think these Prisma colors are usually a good test because Prisma colors break pretty easily. These are all standard size. This is an actual auto stop, not an auto disengage. It actually stops. Now that is supposedly the dull point. Okay. I'm going to dial it over to the sharp point. Oh, I'm going to leave that dull. Let's do another one. You can tell this is slower than those others. Because of the size, it's not just going to have as big a motor. Okay, auto stop. Needle fine point. I love those cams, though, that hold that really firm. That's a nice feature. Let me do a fatter pencil. Let's do this charcoal pencil that's never been sharpened. It has, su has such a large core. Perfect. All right, everybody, there's my pencil sharpener review. I hope that you learned something from that. Uh, if you've had questions, 
Uh, it has been a frequently asked question over the years. And most of the time I just refer people to uh, this one or this one or both. These are both in my Amazon store. Um, as I test this and feel like uh, it's going to hold up, I'll probably add that one too. But for right now, I know these are both good choices. This looks like a really interesting choice. This is less expensive than these. If you have any questions about sharpeners in general, go ahead and ask them in the comments. Or if you have one that you highly recommend, put that in the comments too, and that way other readers can get other ideas. And maybe ask you questions about them. Ask questions about these, I'll try to answer them. Obviously, this is not exhaustive. I haven't gone out there and bought every pencil sharpener. Let me tell you this though, I have bought a number of pencil sharpeners that I took back almost immediately, especially when my Panasonic went down and I started looking for another one. Uh, I took back, oh, probably a half a dozen. They just chewed up pencils, they didn't work well. Um, so I have done a little bit of trial and error on some of these. I've always been very, very satisfied with these. These are highly rated on Amazon as well. You can read lots of reviews there for this. This is getting good reviews on Amazon also. So that was one of the things that uh, encouraged me about it. It's also available in other colors. I forget what they are. I know uh, black and maybe one other color. Thanks everybody, appreciate you watching. Thank you so much, patrons, for your support of this channel. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.